Welcome back, everyone, to another edition of Rudy's Rants, powered by Come On Now, the podcast. I'm your host, Rudy Rodriguez Shomat. I'm giving you this rant that you asked for. It's the rant that I hadn't gotten done on Friday after the Indiana Fever lost to the Minnesota Lynx. And what I was waiting for was the actual press conference to see if Christy Sides would accept responsibility and ownership of that loss, as she is the reason they lost that game. She was the reason they lost that game. While they turned the ball over a whole bunch, at the end of the day, it was a one-point game, and she took out her two best defensive players and put in her two worst defensive players, and immediately it snowballed in her face. And they lost the game by 11, 99-88, and they fell apart. And there was this streak of bad plays that I have already shown you guys in a previous video where they hit five threes in the final five minutes. The Minnesota Lynx hit five threes in the final five minutes. Katie Lou Samuelson does not understand, understand help side defense. Um, Melissa Smith does not understand help side defense. Christy sides clearly does not understand that you can play a zone in the league. And by playing zone, you protect your awful defensive players, but more, most importantly, they should never have been in the game. They should never have been in the game. Christy Sides' incompetence is why that game ended up that way. She doesn't call a timeout for about a 17-minute span from the end of the, from the seven-plus minute mark of the third quarter to about the final minute of the fourth quarter. And in that time period, a 52-50 game went from 52-50 to 73-60. She allowed the lead to blow up and balloon while her team was getting absolutely smoked off the floor. And she forgets that it's her job as a coach to stem the tide and to keep it from snowballing into a disaster. But she doesn't do that. She allows the lead to blow up and blow up and blow up. Heck, it happened again today against the Atlanta Dream. She doesn't call timeout. She lets the leads blow up in her face. She is allergic to calling timeouts. The difference between good coaches and bad coaches is that they can see when their team is scuffling and they stop it. They stop the game. They don't let it continue. It's what Cheryl Reed did for Minnesota when the, the Indiana Fever ran off some points to start the fourth quarter and got to within six. Indiana continued to run, but it wasn't for lack of trying to stop the tide. But at the end of the day, Lexi Hall picks up her fifth foul. She gets put on the bench with about five minutes and change. For no lot other than I would never have taken her out. That's my opinion. And then she pulls out Fact Bentley like literally a minute later. So you're out there with Katie Lou Samuelson and Melissa Smith playing defense when you need your best defensive players out there. Because in a one point game in the final five minutes, you're not going to win the game with offense. Yes, you have to score, but you're going to win the game by getting stops. Stops for the Indiana Fever turn into baskets. Because Caitlin Clark has that ability to find people streaking down the floor for easy layups. Caitlin Clark finished the game with 25 points, 8 rebounds, and 8 assists. She did. But what you got going on here when you're watching this game is you have a coach who deflects blame. She is notoriously deflecting blame. If there was a game in which she should have gotten her ass kicked out, it was Friday night. Officiating in the WNBA is terrible. It's terrible. We know this. It's not a secret. So if it's not a secret, stop blaming it for why you lose a game. Stop looking at it for a cop-out. The players have to stop complaining. The second they stopped complaining in that game, they got back into the game. The second they focused on just playing, they got back into the game. Same thing happened against Atlanta. When they stopped complaining, they got back in the game. Yet people are still complaining about the officials, even though Indiana outshot Atlanta from the free throw line today. Think about that. You complained about the fact that you didn't get calls last game, but today the Indiana Fever outshot the, the Dream 25-18 to 18 at the line and had less fouls called on them. Are you complaining about the officials now? You're still complaining about them because they still suck. That's the point. They still suck. They're not good whether you get more free throws or not. You know, but what you did today is you only took 25 threes. You didn't take over 30 threes like you did the other day. And Kelsey Mitchell wasn't taking 22-foot twos. She went to the rim a lot more. 
Caitlin Clark went to the rim a lot more. Actually, I take that back. Caitlin Clark didn't go to the rim a lot more. She took 13 threes and 17 shots, which is crazy. My my mistake. I didn't realize she shot that many threes. Holy shit. That's too many threes. It's too many. Go to the rim. That was today. But I know Kelsey Mitchell is more aggressive towards the basket. That I know for a fact. And um, even then, Kelly Clark, Caitlin Clark took eight free throws. Aaliyah Boston took eight free throws. But you got to be aggressive. And Caitlin Clark did get fouled on a couple of, you know, things towards the basket because she did go to the basket a few times. She was three for four on two and two and four and four for, for 13 on three. She shot seven for 17. Not that great. But, you know, 26 points, 12 assists, way too many turnovers, nine turnovers. But again, those were a lot of drop balls again by her teammates. All that said, Christy Sides, this is her press conference, and I'm going to absolutely obliterate her in this press conference. It's pretty much what we talked about. Um, you know, that felt like playoff basketball, and that's what I just kept telling our players. Like, you know, that's who they are. They are a good veteran team. Um, they came out in the third quarter, and they got in our ass, and when they did, we didn't handle it very well. And then we let the officials um, rattle us as well. And that's that's growing and understanding. Like, if you just give a team like that a little bit, they'll they'll take advantage of you. And that's what that's what we did. But def- 35 games in. You're 35 games in. We let the referees get to us. We let this get to us. Let- Christy Sides, you're the fucking coach of the team. You know what happens when you see that happening? Timeout. You know what happens when you see your players going back and forth with the referees? You know what you do? You take on that role. You go at the officials. You, if need be, get a technical foul. You, if need be, get thrown out that goddamn game. But you make a thing about it. You make it very, very clear. This is bullshit what's going on tonight. You make a thing about it big time. No, you stand there like a fucking puppet, like, like a statue with your hands in your pockets. You get more mad at your players because they're upset. Yes, they're upset. They're getting fouled. This is the WNBA. Calls don't get made. But this is her first comment. We, we, player, 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 player. What are that? What about that is on you? What about that's on you? Defensively, we've just been much better since the break. And I mean, we gave up 80 points in three quarters. I mean, you just. That's your fault. You're the fucking head coach. How long were you going to leave Melissa Smith and Katie Lou Samuelson on that floor? How long? How long do you leave those two stiffs on the floor? They shouldn't play. If if Melissa Smith isn't hitting buckets, she shouldn't play. You don't give yourself a chance. And a, a lot of it, we just were watching a few clips. That's A lot of it was us. We weren't where we were supposed to be, just in like a five-man shell. Like we weren't at the nail. We weren't in 2-9. We weren't in hell. We weren't in gaps. Um, we let them. Do you teach help defense? I broke your shit down. Do you teach help defense? Katie Lewis Samuelson doesn't understand help defense. Katie Lewis Samuelson doesn't understand that if I have a 5'8 guard under the rim being guarded by a 6'5 center, I shouldn't help off the corner shooter. That might be the responsibility of Melissa Smith, who's, who's covering a power forward who can't shoot on the wing. She should drop in if that need be. But otherwise, what are you, what are you helping on? What is the help for? It's it's useless. It allows them to get wide open looks, which is how they kicked your ass in the final five minutes of that game. Get biased and with dribble penetration too much. Our goal is to contest every single shot. We didn't we didn't get out on our closeouts and contest. And they, I mean, they're a great shooting team. Why don't you play zone? Why don't you mix in some zone? Indiana's a great shooting team. You know what happened when they faced the zone? They couldn't hit a shot. When Fe- the Phoenix Mercury zoned their asses up in two games after Indiana blew them off the fucking floor for, by, up by 30 in both situations, what did Phoenix do? They went zone. And that zone made Indiana look like they'd never played basketball before. Why don't you go zone? Zone defenses are designed to protect bad defensive players. Caitlin Clark is not a good defensive player on ball. Kelsey Mitchell is not a good defensive player on ball. Melissa Smith is an atrocious defensive player. Katie Lou Samuelson is an atrocious defensive player. If you have Caitlin Clark, Kelsey Mitchell, Katie Lou, and Melissa Smith on the court at the same time, 
why aren't you in a zone? Why not confuse them, change it up? You are allowed to change up defensive schemes. There's never a change in the defensive scheme for Indiana, ever. They run the same shit all the time. You're the coach. You're failing. Heck, you've failed. The only reason that you were named coach of the month is because your players have balled out. They haven't done that because of you. They've done that shit in spite of you. Kelsey Mitchell didn't go for 36 in a game because of you. Caitlin Clark hasn't been averaging 24, 25 a game since the break because of you. Like, what are we talking about here? You're the head coach. You're supposed to fix these things. You're supposed to see, watch film. You're supposed to see the issues that you, your team might have defensively against a team like Minnesota. And you should never put in your two worst defenders in the game, in the final five minutes of a game. That's a one-point game. It makes no sense. We'll go, Keen, then we'll go back to Christine. Coach, um, throughout your, your win streak, you've had that kind of consistent uh, con- contribution from another player like uh, Nalissa or Temi or Lexi. Just how important is it to get that fourth contributor either as a starter or off the bench? Yeah, I mean, that's huge. You know, I think tonight we, um, we were – playing okay and then we got to that third quarter and got rattled and I think we just tried to do it ourselves a lot instead of the way that we've um, been able to get out of those moments as of late when we've been able to stop people's runs Um, and we just let it snowball on us and that's something that we've been better at and that we've got to make sure that we clean up you know because this is someone we could possibly play and um, just gave us a taste of what it feels like um, to that playoff basketball. This playoff basketball commentary so in playoff basketball, are you going to experiment with ridiculous lineups? In playoff basketball, are you going to put Melissa Smith and Katie Lou Samuelson in the game with five minutes to go in a one-point game? I would hope to God not. That's what you that's what you call playoff basketball. 19 or whatever, 18, 19, 20 turnovers. The last three games, including today. The Indiana Fever have been absolutely atrocious protecting the ball. Horrendous as a unit. They have turned the ball over so goddamn much, it's ridiculous. And yet they're two and one in those games. Two and one. They were they had shot like 60% from the floor in the first half today and were trailing by four because they had given up 11 to there was like 11 to 1 turnovers. Like, the fact that they were in the game is a miracle. There are things that I just sit here and I watch and I'm listening to this direct. Like, it's. The ball. So we just got to be ready for that, ready to to stop those runs and not let just our emotions. You stop the run. Call a fucking timeout, you stupid ass. Are you stupid? Are you stupid? Stupido? How do you stop a run? You call timeout. Did you notice when they fucking went on the run in the third in the fourth quarter? Did you notice what actually happened? Oh yeah, the end of the quarter happened, so there was a timeout mandated by the WNBA. You know what that did? That allowed those women to reset themselves. Something that you should have done four minutes earlier in the quarter. Maybe it wouldn't have come down to that had you allowed them to reset themselves. Instead, what happens? They're down 13. They sit down and come back out and get that lead down to one twice inside of five minutes. Inside of five minutes. And then you fucked it up by with, with your substitution patterns. You stop the damn run. Call a timeout, you dumbass. Get the best of us. We'll go Christine, then we'll go Matt. Christy, so in the third quarter, Caitlin is, you know, rubbing up the crowd and whatever, but is, is clearly, you know, and she said it too, getting, you know, there's that line, right? And you didn't want to cross it. What Do you say anything to her at that point? Do you, what, she, she came to the bench, obviously, for those last few minutes of the third quarter, and she then seemed to be fine as far as the fourth quarter emotionally, right? And just yeah. back in it. Is there a switch that you can kind of turn on and off? Or how, how do you coach someone who is obviously, the crowd is loving it, right? Yeah. But clearly you also don't want to get an, have her get another technical right. foul or whatever. Thanks. Yeah, I think that's, um, you know, she's just so passionate and so, um, She's just a hell of a, I mean, her, her competitive spirit is like, 
I mean, it reminds me of uh, Diana Taurasi. I mean, she's largest competitor. Tell me exactly why she would draw a technical foul doing this to the crowd. I'm more worried about what she does to referees, not doing this to get the crowd going. It's when she does this, like she's complaining to referees every time she gets breathed on, every time she gets touched. And you as the coach stand there with your hands in your pockets. Maybe if you interjected yourselves into these bad calls, you took the blame for Caitlin Clark. You took the you took the sword, not allow her to take it. Maybe she might get more calls. This is the joke that is Christy sides. But you no, know, you gotta keep her calm. I don't need Caitlin Clark to be calm. I need Caitlin to be competitive. I need her to have that fire that she's got. I need her to not complain to referees, but bumping the crowd up? What the hell? Let her do it. You get te- you're never going to get a technical foul for that. She's that. And so when she just, when she is upset or mad, like that's what we've been, you know, we've been working on trying to figure out how to, how to get past those moments. You know, um, I was worried she was going to pick up a T um, in that third quarter. And uh, thank goodness. That she- Why? Because she was pissed at the refs while you stood there and did nothing while you didn't call a timeout? Could that be why? Do your job, lady. She didn't, but that's that's growth, and she's got to learn that in those moments, I need my point guard to have a cool head, um, get us in whatever we need to be in offensively, and then you know, if it's if it's not a foul call that you thought, you got to get back. You know, you got to get back and transition and and help our team get stops. So, you know, we're working on those things. That's that's what a young team. That's what you do is you try to figure out, talk about these moments, watch them in video. Show them where, you know, okay, this is this just can't happen because it caused this, this, and this. There's a reaction, you know, to all of our actions, and we've got to make sure that we don't put ourselves in a, a worse spot with those kind of moments. Go down the line, Matt, Chloe, James. How do you protect your players? How do you protect your players? You know how you protect your players? You want me to explain this to you, Christy Sides? how you as the coach protect your players. When you see your co- your your best player, the player that you can ill afford to have get frustrated to the point where she draws a, a, flake, a technical foul, she will be suspended for the next game from what I get. I think she has has one left for, reg- for the regular season. If she gets one more, sh- she is suspended for the next game. You know how you protect her? The second you see that shit happen, you – Lose your mind on the ref. You take the attention away from her. But you don't. You'd rather yell at her. You'd rather fuss at her. You'd rather get in her face. No, you get in the referee face. You do what every baseball manager in the history of time does when he has a hitter who gets rung up on a bad strike call. And the player comments about the strike, which can get you ejected. You know what a manager does in baseball? He's worth less to the team winning than the player is. The player has to be on the court. You have no value to your team. Your value is to be in the in the face of the referees. That's your value because your, your play calling is trash. Your defensive schemes are not good. Your coaching is not good. What should be done? By a baseball manager when his player is arguing with the balls and strikes, the baseball manager runs right on the field, pushes his player away to avoid his player getting ejected, and he gets in the umpire's face, and he takes it all, and he possibly gets ejected himself. Takes it away from the player. That's your job. And you fail at it every single game. Has Christy Sides drawn a technical foul all year? I don't think she's drawn more than one or two. Christy Sides should be drawing a technical foul damn near every game. Damn near every game. Because this happens every game. Ben Jacob. Yeah, in the uh, third quarter coming out of half, uh, Minnesota was forcing a lot of turnovers on the pick Six. and roll. Yes. Um, you know, just cla- collapsing in that high action. Um, from your viewpoint on the sidelines, were you just actively wanting to change that? Was it maybe just realizing a little bit too late that you needed to change something? What was kind of the... Game plan there. No, I think there were some times probably when we go back and watch, we probably needed to execute something um, that was uh, a little longer. You know, we are second or first in the league in points in the paint, or I think third or fourth, but like 
we tied Minnesota, who isn't very good at points in the paint. I think they're maybe 11 or 12. And so we have to take advantage of where we have the advantage. And I don't think, I think there were times where we need to just come down, execute, get a pass. All right, let's do this again. Okay. You run pick and roll with Caitlin Clark and Aaliyah Boston. You know what you tell Aaliyah Boston to do? Roll to the fucking rim. You tell Aaliyah Boston, I'm pick and roll, roll to the rim. Pick and pop is not going to work if Aaliyah Boston is 24 feet from the basket. She's not a threat offensively. She's going to miss that shot 9 of 10 times, maybe 10 of 10 times if she shoots a 24-footer. If you're running pick and pop, that pick and roll action has to be run closer to the free throw line so that the pop is a free throw shot or an, a, a 14 or 13 footer. It's not a 24 footer. If you're running pick and roll from the top of the fucking key, you tell Aaliyah Boston to roll to the rim. The fact that she's not rolling to the rim is she stopped for the most part until today against Atlanta. She stopped rolling to the rim. She wants to become a de facto facilitator. She is not Bam Adebayo. She can't handle the rock. Roll to the basket. Get your big ass around the hoop and bang. That's how you dominate the paint. That's how you don't have a tie in the paint. With Minnesota, who shoots tons of threes. Because you're not being aggressive around the rim. I think there were times where we needed to just come down. In the fourth quarter where you guys were down one, and then she tried to bounce the ball. I believe it was to Temi, and it was intercepted pretty easily And how she thought that was a bad read. Just how do you try to coach her through that and the kind of if she wants to take that shot herself? Yeah, I mean, she came right to the bench and talked about it, that it was a bad pass, bad decision. I mean there's, there's, there's the difference between your coach and your player. Caitlin Clark knew that she made a mistake. Caitlin Clark owned her mistake. Caitlin Clark knows what she did, and she acknowledges and she owns it. I'm going to skip the rest of this bullshit fucking interview, to be honest, because it's not even worth the, the it's not even worth your, your ears. What you have not heard in five minutes is this coach blame herself. What you've not heard in five minutes is this coach has not taken accountability at all for this. And again, as I said in the live, you don't have to dog your players out to say what you need to say. You don't have to go up there and say, I should never have subbed in uh, Smith and Samuelson. I should, I don't, you don't have to say that. You don't have to embarrass your players by name. But your response of, this loss is on me. It starts and it ends with me. This inability for her to take that stance and get up there and own it is what's so ungodly frustrating about watching her coach. She sucks as a coach. We, we, she's not a good coach. She's not a good coach. But at the end of the day, we have to look at it from a from a from a from a. From a a, 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 a magnifying glass and say, I lost this game. My decisions lost this game. My inability, my lack of adjusting lost this game. But she doesn't do that. She doesn't do that. She never does it. I mean, you know, we just have to make sure we take care of that basketball in those moments. Like, get a, we have to get a good shot. And, um, Let's go skip this crap. Where is it? Here, let's. Or three. Let's go look. We put them at the free throw line too much. That's discipline. Our foul discipline wasn't good. We are I'm when we're frustrated like that and we're getting beaten dribble penetration, we slap down. You could have called the timeout. That's an easy call for an official. You could have called the timeout. That's just discipline. Oh, things that we got to get better. That's crap. All right. yeah, that's something. I think there's definitely a line. Um, I thought it was frustrating. I thought I got fouled a couple times there in the second half okay. on mid range jump shots. And I mean, it, it happens. Sometimes they get called. Sometimes they don't. It is what it is. I think I settled a little bit too much for mid-range jump shots. But um, yes. like I said, I felt I got bumped a little bit. And I was honestly trying to shot pick them to get them to foul me. Um, but 
I mean, I think I could have done a little bit better job controlling my own emotions, but I think it just started bad for us and then continued to start. I could have done a little bit more to control my own emotions. There's the difference between a coach who's not accountable and the player who is accountable. I could have done better. Sorry, let's go back here. I thought it was frustrating. I thought it got felt bad for us and then continued to snowball. And that's something we have to control a little bit better. Um, not only like did we not execute on the offensive end in the third quarter, but I thought they destroyed us offensively. Um, our defense wasn't very good. And that's the coach's job to, fix, to save you from yourselves. It's coach's job. So uh, I think just improving in that area and just all kind of gathering our emotions a little bit better and finding better shots. Um, I thought we kind of stopped playing in a way that made us successful in the first half. So um, just a good learning opportunity for us. Um, we know who stopped the way y'all play. Y'all weren't running. We know who it was. It was coach. It's coach. Coach stops you from running. We know who it is. I still I feel like we could have played a lot better. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I, th I think there's a line, and sometimes your your passion and your emotion can, can get to you, but – that's never any something I would, ever, I would ever change or anybody on our team would change. So, Go Chloe, then Christine. Yeah, Caitlin, you mentioned, you know, how everything started to snowball. Just what do you think you guys need to do to just stop the bleeding in that instance? Um, I mean, I think it starts defensively. I think get a stop. I mean, it's going to be hard to win a game when they outscore you by 17 points in a quarter. It's impressive that we got it back to one point. Um, and honestly, I thought we played really good in the fourth and uh, that my turnover and transition is what I felt like really kind of ended the momentum for us. I think it was 78, 77. I got a block and a steal and we were running in transition and honestly made just a really bad read. Um, I thought the girl was going to come over. She never ended up, ended up coming over. So, um, I think defensively is where it has to start. Let's stop that right there. We're getting this. That's all I wanted to show you. You just her, you just listen to Caitlin Clark tell you why she made the pass she made, and that she made a bad read, and she's accepted her. She's accountable for what she did. That is that is like accountability is all you were looking for. Be responsible. Be accountable. I made a bad read. I thought she'd come up. She didn't. And actually, if you if you listen from that perspective, if she does come up, then yeah, that wraparound's there. It's there, but she didn't come up. And even if she had come up, I still would have told Caitlin Clark to go take her ass to the basket. That would have been my opinion regardless. I still think it would have been a bad decision. But it's neither here nor there. The difference is she's accountable and says, my turnover pretty much stopped the momentum that we had. On me. I did it. Head coach. Player. We. Them, I'm sorry. Them. Player. Young. Not prepared, doesn't know how to rotate. It's, it's 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 excuse after excuse after excuse after there's excuse galore, and none of those things lead back to me, the coach. Nothing comes back to me, Christy Sides. It's everybody else, and that's why she's a bad coach, and that's why she should be fired, no matter what happens at the end of the season. That's what I got for tonight. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you again for jumping on with us tonight. 300 plus strong. Come on now.